Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to graph in lines using transformation. The first thing I need you to realize is that a linear function has a basic equation. That basic equation is called the parent function. And the parent function equation is described right here. You got y equals x. There's no numbers, it's just very plain and basic. We want to figure out what that graph looks like, and all graphs will be based on that. You learned last time to make sure that you made tables. Tables are what helps you graph it. So let's go ahead and make a table. It's very easy on this one. We've got plug in any x that you want. Let's plug in negative 5. If I plug in negative 5 for x, what is y equal? Yeah, it also equals negative 5. y is the same as x. So if I plug in negative 2, y is also negative 2. 0 y is also 0. 3, y is also 3. Let's go ahead and plot these points. Negative 5, 5. Negative 2, negative 2. 0, 0. 3, 3. And remember there's an infinite number of more points possible, but we only need a few of them to get the shape of the line. So I'm going to draw my line go through those points. So now what we have is our parent function. There's a couple of very key characteristics that you need to know about this function and you need to memorize these. The parent function, we need to know its rate of change. Right? So if I go up one, two, three, over 3. 3 over 3 is a slope of 1. 2 over 2 is a slope of 1. So the rate of change of the parent function is 1. You need to know that. The other thing you need to know is where the y-intercept is. An intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So in this case, here's my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. I'm curious, where does the graph cross the y-axis? And you can see that it crosses the y-axis right here at the point 0, 0. That's what you need to know about the parent function. The equation y equals x has a rate of change of 1 and a y-intercept of 0, 0. Let's look at what happens when we make changes to our function. Here we have y, f of x equals x. That's the same thing as saying y equals x. There's no difference. Okay, This is called function notation. But either way, we've got the exact same parent function that we were discussing. What we're going to do is change what multiplies by x. So here I just got a 1x. If I do a 2x, <coughs> the graph changed. If I do a 3x, the graph keeps on changing. y equals 4x, 5x. What's happening to the line? It's getting steeper. As I lower the number I'm multiplying by, it gets <clears throat> less steep. Then all of a sudden you notice a big change. Here's the parent function. <clears throat> if I change it to a negative, obviously the more positive it gets, the steeper it gets. Right? The question is what happens when I go to a negative? When I go to a negative, what happens is that it flips, or what we call rotate or reflects. So here we are. And then now I'm going to change it to a negative one. It reflected, it flipped. Here's y equals 2x. And then here's negative 2. So here's y equals 2x. I'll try to draw the line here so you can see it. If I make it a negative 2x, it's reflected. It's flipped. So two things we want to take away. The bigger the number, the steeper the graph. When you multiply, by number changes the steepness. So again the parent function 
is right here. If I multiply by a 2, it gets steeper. 3 gets steeper. 4, even steeper. If you multiply by a negative number, it reflects the graph. So negative 2, negative 3, it's the reflection. So to summarize those details, we're talking about transformations. What happens when you multiply the x? Two things happen. Number one, the bigger the number, the bigger the number you multiply by, the steeper the graph. It changes the steepness. What's another word for steepness? We're talking about slope. Okay, talking about slope. The other thing that happens when we multiply is if we multiply by a negative, if we multiply by a negative, number, the graph reflects. Reflex. So there's kind of two wor key words here. We're talking about multiplying numbers. The bigger you multiply, the steeper it gets. If we multiply by a negative, the graph reflects. So let's compare two graphs. We've got f of x equals 3x, and g of x equals negative 2x. First, this number is positive, this number is negative. So we would say g and f, g and f are reflections of each other. And that is because one was positive, one was negative. But also, we look at this 3 here, we would say because 3 is bigger than 2, we don't really focus on the negative 2, because 3 is bigger than 2, we would say f is steeper. f is steeper. Than g. So that's the big idea. When you multiply a number, you change the steepness and reflex. If we go back to the graph, we can actually see here I've multiplied by negative 3. I've got y equals negative 3x. If I compute the slope, you can actually see it right here. It went down, they actually calculated it here. It went down 4, or up 4, left negative 3, negative 1.34. If I change this, I multiply by a 2x, look, my slope is 2. If I multiply it by a 4x, my slope is 4. If I multiply it by a 5x, my slope is 5. So the number we multiply actually is the slope. Now let's look at what happens when we add or subtract numbers. So here's my parent function, y equals x again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add numbers to here. So I'm going to add a 1. Okay, or I'm going to add a 2 or a 3. What's happening to the graph? It's moving, right? It's whether it's moving up or down. What I want you to focus on is our parent function we know has a y-intercept of 0, 0. That was one of the things that you needed to memorize. The y-intercept of 0, 0. If I add 1, my y-intercept is now, we can see it, my y-intercept is 0, 1. If I add 3, so x plus 3, my y-intercept is 3. Same thing for subtracting. If I subtract 4, my y-intercept is negative 4. So what happens is I move the graph up or down by adding or subtracting a number. What happens when you add or subtract from the x? The y-intercept is 
moves up or down. The y-intercept moves up or down. So I forgot to change this here. So let me give you an example. If I said let's compare the parent function y equals x to y equals x plus 9. What happened? The second equation the second equation is 9 units higher than the parent function. Because I was at y equals x and I added 9. So a couple summary items that you need to write down. What is the parent function of a line? y equals x. What do we know about the parent function? We know the rate of change or the slope is 1. And we know the y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay, it crosses at the origin. Slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is what happens when we change the equation. We said that we could multiply by a number or we could add a number. So we use M for slope, like slope of a mountain, and B is it's the second letter. When we multiplied by a number, that changed the steepness. Or in other words, that is the slope. And when we added or subtracted a number, it moved the y-intercept up or down from 0, 0. So if it moves up 5, the y-intercept is 0, 5. So this is the y-intercept. Last slide, we'll just do some practice problems. Describe the transformations from the parent function to f of x equals 3x, then graph. So I'm comparing the parent function to f of x equals 3x. Well, there's only thing difference about it is it got multiplied. It got multiplied by a bigger number. This guy's slope is 1. This guy's slope is 3. So we would say f is steeper. f is steeper. With f being steeper, we can graph it. Where was the parent function's y-intercept? The parent function's y-intercept was at 0, 0. And because we didn't add, we're not changing the y-intercept. What is different is the slope. Here my slope is 3. So that means I'm going to go up 3 over 1. Up 3 over 1, but just I'm going to go the other direction. Down 3 over 1. Down 3 backwards 1. And then you can graph the line. Okay. Now we look at this graph. Lots of things are different on this one. We're comparing this to y equals x. Well, what's different? The first thing that's different is this has a negative number and this has a positive. So we would say g is reflected because of the negative number. What else do we know? It's being multiplied by two-thirds. This guy's being multiplied by one. And what's bigger? One is bigger. Two-thirds is smaller. So g is less steep. Or you could say that the parent function is more steep. Finally, there's a plus one at the end. Well, what does that do? When we add, that moves graphs up or down. So the y-intercept, or the graph, g, is moved 
because it was positive, G is moved up 1. So we're going to graph this guy now. Up 1. So the y-intercept was 0, 0. And now we moved up 1. So I'm there. At 0, 1. This is my y-intercept. This is my slope, negative 2 over 3. So I'm going to go down 2 over 3, forward 3. Down 2, forward 3. And I can keep on doing that. Likewise, I can go backwards. I can go up to backwards 3. And then I can draw a line. There you go. That ends today's lesson. Good luck. Look forward to seeing you next day in class.